Okay, Steve, so um, you finished your trip in Israel, right? You've got tapes up the wazoo, probably 100, 300, uh, 400 hours worth of interviews. You're probably pretty excited, right? Because you probably got some great stuff. That's exactly right. You know, I, I spent, uh, made two trips to Israel, three weeks and six weeks. So nine weeks and then two other trips to Paris to interview one particular guy, Yossi Ben Hanan. And uh, so I came home, I think I had 370 hours of I mean, I had, I had little folders on my screen, which I still have on my computer screen, filled the entire screen, right? So I got home and I thought, well, you know, I've got to be like Woodward and Bernstein, you know? <laughs> so I started, you know, like transcribing, you know, tape number one and tape number two and tape. And this went on for like about two weeks. And finally, I just said, fuck it, you know? I said, I'm just going to write the book, you know? So I just plunged in and just did it from memory. You know, I, saw, I knew what, you know, from having the fool's cap, I knew where I wanted to start. And of course, I'd been thinking about it all along uh -huh. as, as various actual interviews happened. So I knew I wanted to start, you know, with Cheetah Cohen and Nehemia Cohen, and I want to end with them. And the reason I know that it was good is when I think back on it, I have like no memory of it. Mm. You know, I don't know how long it took, but it was one of those sieges where you just kind of plunge in and you just, you let it rip. And uh, that was, I hate to say it, but that was like the easiest part. The writing of the book was by far right. the easiest part. The interviews and, the, and then the afterward, working with the publisher, was the hardest part of, of, of all. Um, so but you, so didn't, you didn't just like make up what these people were saying. You, you no, put I down the gist it. and then, so you remembered it and then you went back and you checked. And right. if, if it didn't overlap, so exactly. you didn't like. In fact, I thought to myself, like if I wasn't sure, so I'm writing something that, you know, Yoram Zamosh said, right? And I wasn't sure if I was getting it right, I just said, the hell with it, I'll fact to check TK later. To come. Right, <laughs> TK, I'll fact check later. Now it's important to keep moving, you know? Yeah. And like you said. So say, that was your, sort of your Kavanaugh That was my Kavanaugh, right, Rish. keep moving. <laughs> keep going to El Arish, keep going to the canal. <laughs> really, it's true, I, you know, each morning I thought, you know, just keep moving, keep moving, don't right. look to the sides, you know, if you lose, Ten tank, nine tanks out of ten, keep moving with the first. So yeah. that was how that, so that was how that worked out. The, the writing. So that was the easiest part. And then there's a, uh, you know, we're talking about Embraer and Mig Killers and Kavanaugh. you know and the death verse and the Kavanaugh. But there was another concept over there that Danny taught me, but that I heard over and over again. And the word is uh, Balagan, Balagan, which comes from Russian, but it's going to become Hebrew, and it basically means craziness, chaos. You know, and. Uh, so that you'd hear it a lot of times where like, uh, we were over the airfield and we looked down and there was just flames everywhere and smoke everywhere and, and nothing, and it was just a total balagan. Nobody knew what was happening. Right, you know? right. And uh, so the, one of the great, what makes the IDF so great and the Air Force so great over there, for, and it was very clear to me, was that they're very comfortable in a balagan. And in many ways they're trying to create a Balagan, and this is probably part of the Jewish character, you know, whether it's Israelis here or in LA or wherever they are doing, oh, you know, they yeah. are comfortable in chaos, you know? And I think uh, whereas their enemies, at that time at least, the Egyptians and the Syrians were very heavily regimented. There was a real um, uh, schism between the officer class and the enlisted man class. The enlisted men were, you know, f what they called fellahin, from the Nile Delta, they were farmers, they were poor people, they were uneducated. These were the enlisted men. And the officers were, had silk underwear, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they looked down, there was no real, so if the, if, the, uh, if the command could be decapitated a little bit, if you could shake up the command, the guys in the trenches didn't know what to do, couldn't improvise. If you could create a balagan among the enemy, they were paralyzed, oh, you know? I get it. Whereas the, you know, the average Israeli is very comfortable improvising, and of course that's the culture of the IDF too, is to, uh, you know, disobey orders if you have to. Right. Re remembering the Kavanaugh, you know, whatever that is. So, um, and in the writing, there was a lot of balagans, you know? But again, remembering the Kavanaugh, you would keep moving forward.